Friday night, you may have caught our special on pets. This morning, the subject is pet peeves. We have an appointment with Dr. John LaPook. Lately, I've been thinking about whether pet peeves are actually a good thing. Like a pet dog, can they provide comfort? My pet peeves mostly have to do with the use of language. Something cannot be very unique. It cannot be very one of a kind. It is either unique or not unique. See how I got a little agitated there? I blew off some steam about something that means absolutely nothing in the scheme of things. And I do think I'm feeling a little bit better now. Pet peeves are just important enough to irritate us, but not important enough to make a difference in our lives. And they have to be both barely important and recurrent. So you would not call breaking your leg in a ski accident a pet peeve. Ow! Which brings us to literally versus figuratively. If your head literally exploded, there better be brains on the wall. I'm a doctor, so I know this. And why ever start a sentence with, to tell you the truth, does that mean everything else you've been telling me is a lie? My favorite pet peeve is the call center person who politely asks, may I please have the correct spelling of your last name? <laughs> I'm so glad you said correct, otherwise I would have answered Lapook, Q-R-Z-Z-M-W, Lapook. In this age of social media, should you keep your pet peeves to yourself? Should you silently seethe or try to inform? My vote, as we hope to enter an era of increased civility, keep them to yourself. There are enough people weighing in on other people's faults. Here's what I think. Our pet peeves actually serve a purpose. While they're irritating, they let us quietly vent about something that truly does not matter without ruining somebody else's day. So embrace your pet peeves but don't let them bite anyone else. Like all pets, they can be very therapeutic.